afternoon. Ras Houses is a very modest housing project located in a remote area in Rajasthan, which has a desert climate in India. So this is the site. It's actually, if you look at the Google uh, map, there is no inhabitation anywhere around. The closest city to the site is 60 kilometers away. And it is located three kilometers away from a cement plant that was commissioned five years ago. And this was to provide housing for the people working in that cement plant. So out of the 90 acres, our site is 18 acres in the central portion of this long site, which has a contour difference about 16 meters. And when the client gave us this project, we got a call from the engineering department immediately saying that can we start leveling the site in the meantime, you do the design because we have a very short time to put this construction together because people are already working in the cement plant and we need accommodation really fast. So to which we had to argue with them saying that please do not cut any contour. We'd like to work on the existing contours of the site. So the site is located in the center of this 90 acres. It's an 18 acre parcel which has a playground on the western side. And if you look at Rajasthan or if you know Rajasthan, Rajasthan is known for these organic cities and settlements which have been there since many hundred years everywhere. The city Jaisalmer is known as the yellow city for uh, the yellow stone. Jodhpur is known as the blue city for its blue lime plaster. Jaipur is known as a pink city. So more importantly, these organic cities have a very interesting pattern when you walk through. There are narrow streets which converge, which diverge. There are small pockets of spaces which they open up to. And these become the social interaction spaces everywhere. And it is this character that we wanted to bring in the housing project that we are doing in this region. And in fact, here now, a lot of these families that have been living here since three or four generations have converted one part of their house into a guest room. And a lot of tourists come every year at this season in these three months, December, Jan, Feb, to actually experience this whole organic city. So taking the cue from the organic city, these residential units are planned in such a way that they rotate and they twist along the existing contours with a large central hub which forms the central function area which includes the common facilities of the gym and the lounge and breakout areas from where different arms go into the different typologies of units some of which are studio apartments the guest house rooms and there is a bachelor accommodation at the bottom so this is the overview which the main arterial road running on the eastern side with off-street parking spaces, so one enters the central hub, which has all the common facilities. And from there, these thin arms organically weave through the site, through the existing contours, and lead one to different residential units, which are nestled in the open space. And each one opens up into sheltered spaces outside, taking cognizance of the desert climate where this is located. So each apartment opens into these sheltered spaces and they are oriented largely towards the north with some units overlooking the playground on the western side. And as one moves through this, it's a very interesting feel where every part has its own identity and its own character. So these are the bachelor's accommodation at the bottom of the side with each space opening into semi-sheltered outdoor spaces. So the plan is constantly varying at every level as well as on the existing contours and taking this whole organic arrangement further, each one of these units is actually fragmented into spaces that change at every floor with each space opening into a sheltered open to sky space. So across the site, we had to make something like 60 different sections varying since there is a contour difference from the east to the west, as well as from the north to the south. And for this, uh, when we sent the drawings, the engineering department of the client told us that this is not possible. This is way too 
extensive amount of work for us. We used to doing very typical housing units that are repeated. And we had to argue for a long time that this is actually good for you because it respects the contours of the site and does not cut anything. So it is actually economical. To which they then just said that we're not going to pay you anything extra for doing all this extra work. And we said that's okay because the end result was something that really is contextual to the location. And at every portion of the site, each one of these units opens up to the landscape in a very interesting way with different compositions, complete natural ventilation throughout the buildings, respecting the existing contours and creating very interesting open spaces and compositions of built forms true to the nature of the organic cities that are all over Rajasthan. This is the central area which houses the common facilities from which one goes into the arms that lead to the separate residential units. Even the public facilities open into large semi-sheltered spaces which are usable throughout the day, taking cognizance of the 40 degrees Celsius temperature that is outside for eight months of the year. So at every point, the buildings look interesting. And more importantly, each unit has an identity of its own because of the way it sits on the site, because of the way it looks out, and because of the way it is oriented with the nature that surrounds it. The landscape is kept very, very minimal since water is scarce in this area. And these are the corridors that run through organically, weaving through the site and connecting all these residential units together. All of them are naturally ventilated. And we took a cue for this from the traditional Rajasthani colors, which are very strong right from the bangles to the clothing to the turbans to the women's drapes which are called saris all these people are constantly in these vibrant colors and these vibrant colors have been imbibed to identify each one of these corridor spaces make them more interesting and make them different in each part so natural light plays a very important role including the circulation of air that is all through and keeps changing the light patterns all throughout with these large picture windows which look out at the landscape very interestingly in different parts in different ways. So the entire 180 units that sit here have complete natural light in each portion. They're all constructed out of fly ash bricks which is a byproduct of the cement plant that is close by. All the spaces are naturally ventilated and the windows are deeply recessed to reduce the heat gain further. And the electrical energy, we wanted to create solar panels here, but when we found out that there's so much residual energy from the cement plant itself, the cement plant's residual energy is uh, gives the entire energy used for this housing. So there is actually no other energy being generated for this project. Within the entire project, there's a natural water catchment area, which has been deepened to create a water reservoir. And this is already supplying water with recycling to the entire township. And there's no cutting of contours, as I mentioned before. So the Ras Houses project is a contextually designed housing project, which takes cognizance of the climate, creates natural ventilation and natural light in every part. And most importantly, takes its cues from the traditional housing that has been prevalent here since many hundreds of years. And yesterday, when we spoke to the client and told them that we won this really major award, and uh, you know, it, it's a great thing and thank you very much for allowing us to do what we wanted to do. Their reply was that, you know, it's good for you to win this award, but more importantly, in 30 years of building townships for our plants, we have never had inquiries from people from other places wanting to shift specifically to this, in spite of the fact that this township is completely not ready. It is this portion that is ready. So he's saying that is a bigger award for you than the award that you just won because people here are actually lining up to come and stay here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, a very inspiring project. And you can absolutely see the colors and the references of uh, Jaipur and the like in, in those images. Um, it's a very difficult thing to do to try and replicate an organic growth. It's something that I think architects and urbanists are always quite scared of because it's a, it's a narrow line before you, you hit a sort of pastiche. You're trying to create something that happens organically in the city. 
but it seems that this has genuinely worked very successfully. The people who live there, are they all from the cement plant? Is it almost like a campus of accommodation? Yes, it is. Okay, and as a consequence, is it then managed by the cement plant? Yes, it is. Okay, very interesting. And all the little windows that you see, where you have, you can see the windows in the residences themselves obviously follow a sort of logic of the spaces. The very abstract ones, are they always to circulation areas? Yes, those are for the circulation areas and those are kept open. So there's no air conditioning, no fan, not even a fan. And these are all naturally ventilated. Okay, fantastic. Right, I shall hand to start at the far end, Richard. Thanks. Uh, thank you for uh, illustrating the project so well. One question that comes up, I think, in looking at the planning is you very carefully kept the vehicular circulation at the perimeter. And I imagine that's contrary to the typical houses that have been built, but you'll comment on that in a minute. Uh, I'm wondering what the response is from the inhabitants. Are the units that are close to parking the most popular or the ones that are most away in the landscape? So that's a very interesting question because uh, that was also the client's first feedback when we showed the plan. He said, how, you know, we've never made something where the car doesn't reach the house. So he said, this is purposely done because this makes 90% of it pedestrian and therefore there's less pollution. And the answer to that is that the furthest unit is the most popular because you're literally sitting in the middle of landscape and seeing nothing else. Um, I mean, you look amazing coloration. It's, a, it's one of the great strengths of what you've composed here. I'm interested in actually the, the plan of this new settlement. It, it, it is strand-like and not as dense as one would imagine many such settlements would be. Um, does it configure around any other programs, any schools or kindergartens or retail or anything, or are these entirely residential strands uh, of, of human occupation? Uh, I'm really sorry that was not clear. Must be this again. Yeah, right. Um, the arrangement is, seems to be purely residential. Are there other things such as uh, schools or kindergartens or shops that are also clustered uh, around this, these areas where people live in, within these plans? Okay, so the main public spaces, they have a shop. So they have a shop, they have a lounge, they have a cafeteria, they have a games room and a separate TV lounge. Uh, did I answer the question? Yes, so there is this, this communal spaces within these, this development, within each of the blocks? Any school or health facility? Any what? Any school or health facility? Oh yes, there is a school in the campus. There is a school on the southwest uh, corner of the campus. Good, thank you. All right. Um, we can see you made uh, many uh, in many different heights, uh, nice terraces. Uh, but you made many terraces, we can see, and these are, I think, uh, used from many apartment owners, I guess. Uh, yes. But why, um, normally, if we design something like this, you have nice courtyards, but all these apartments has no direct connection to the garden. So they have balconies. Uh, why they have balconies? No, they, 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 they are. Go up. Is that client decision or your decision? No, it's ground plus two and they can all go out. So all the ground floor units go out to the garden directly. But all the balconies are, has a massive balustrades uh, if you go back. That's so the uh, first. The, the ground floor apartments has not, can you show me a connection to the garden? Yes. So look here, for example, can you go back this age? Why he cannot go outside to his garden? No, that's uh, you're looking at a corridor space. One minute, I'll just show it to you. They, they all open out into the garden. I hope there is a specific one. So you see the and one on the left hand yeah. side, it, it opens up straight onto the garden, okay. left and right both. So In all the, garden, all the ground floor units. For all the, the, so all the ground floor units open into the garden and the first floor and the second floor open into terraces. So everybody gets some open space that is directly outside. Does that answer your question? You happy? Yeah. 
uh, Issa. One thing that I think works beautifully is the, the use of color. And um, I see, well, it seems that sometimes it's related also to the, the functions. And I'd like to know if um, maybe in the overall composition and the use of color, does it have to do uh, with the type of apartments or is it more in the idea of uh, sort of creating something that is uh, organic as, as you look at it? So the use of color was primarily because this region is known for its colors, as I showed uh, earlier. So all the clothing and all is very vibrant and this is real. And all these people from Rajasthan are used to all these colors. So it was a thing of using the same colors that they used to and are traditional and at the same time give an identity to each part. So that, you know, you, you're there on that floor that's yellow and you know that it turns red and that's my house. So it becomes an identifying factor. Thank you. It's interesting that because it has this element of a, a planned community, it's all employees of one organization and you have bachelor flats and you have family apartments and then the, the scheme is managed. Do you think that it would work in the same way and have the same quality and care to it if you were to create it in an environment where it wasn't planned and it wasn't managed by an overarching uh, organization? I, they're all employed by the people who manage their residents. Uh, yes, it could because then the every housing then finally makes a society of its own and then they maintain it. So it would work equally well. So do you plan to try and take this model elsewhere? Yes, we want to. But most of the time you get these projects which are small land, very high density, and then you're forced to go up. So It was interesting that you used almost the argument of the economy of not having to re-level the site to justify this approach. Yes. Um, you have to find yourself in more situations where you can use the, uh, the argument of an economy to do something which is, is less dense. It's a fantastic scheme. Was there any other questions on the panel? Okay, well, would you like to come and collect your award? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.